Hey guys, how you doing today? Today, more work continues on our Raspberry Pi powered arcade main computer system. Um, it's been a long haul and uh, we're just about done. Next video will be the final reveal. Today we're going to finish up on the wiring and a few other odds and ends. And uh, So hang out with us and uh, we'll get started. Just an update to the painting going on. I've been working on painting. My least favorite thing to do in the whole world, probably. <laughs> and uh, these are all the black pieces just kind of sitting around. And there's another one over here. And then I already did the red pieces. I'm taking this monitor apart to see what I can do about mounting it. So. Take all these screws out and get it down, get the leg and the and the frame off it and see what else I have to work with here. Originally I thought about just using some kind of straps, but you know it all depends on what's underneath this case. So. I'll go ahead and remove these too. This is one thing that I really didn't address in my plans. I just kind of put it off knowing that it wouldn't be that big a deal to mount it. Um, rather than trying to do a solution on CAD, I figured it would be easier just to build the parts and then figure out what I had to do after they were built. So that's the point I'm at now. This isn't a very heavy monitor at all, nor is it very big. so. This shouldn't be much of a problem. Slides out. It's best to just start with the edges and then work your way um, into the center. You're doing this. And also, if you care about the frame on this monitor, it's best to use a heavy guitar pick or a, like a plastic spatula uh, because I'm mounting this into the main cabinet. I'm not real concerned about if I mark it up a little with a screwdriver. Okay. okay, so after playing around with this thing, what I have to do is put these wood screws um, in this back going up through the metal bracket in the LCD and then land up in the frame like this hopefully you can see that and I have to drill out these holes there's already some holes there but for they're they're for tiny screws so I'm gonna have to uh, make them for you know the quarter inch Time to clean the dirt out of it. One there, 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 and there. Okay, very good. So with four wood screws, two here and two here, I mounted this LCD panel up to my wood. And you know, this whole thing gets covered by um, plexiglass too, that I still have to cut out, but uh, it's pretty secure. Yep, that'll work great. So, you know, if I ever have to get down here and adjust these buttons, um, here I suppose I could break away a little bit of plastic here and get to them but uh, until that time comes I'm just gonna leave them alone don't think I'll need to get in there right away all right 
Getting closer to assembly. You're looking at the bottom of the main cabinet right now. We're beginning to wire all these switches. There's about 25 connections that need to be made, so it's going to take a while. For the joysticks, we're using these connectors here. And to save on wiring, there's four switches but you can just use the common on each of the terminals using a cable like I have here and then you know it'll hook up here to here to here to here on the commons on the bottom terminal and then four more of the straight ones will go to each of the other connections and then that wiring will go into a harness to the top like this and I'm starting to work on this side now and I thought I would just show you how I make these wiring harnesses although they're just clips um, I don't use them the way they come because <clears throat> when you smash these it tends to smash this cover and if you smash this cover it slips off it gets the opportunity to slip off so I have my own way of doing these and if I'm using them on a single I'll use I'll go ahead and use one but if I'm doing a double I'll use shrink wrap like this so let me just make one real quick I'll go ahead and uh, this harness goes over to this one so if I hook up all my commons and I'll be back as soon as I do that so you're supposed to put these on and squeeze them but they always fall off whenever I've done that in the past so I don't do that anymore I just solder them all on takes longer to do but no, they're not going to fall off. I had too many of those fall off in the past. This is a cold water rag. That's better in a connection that you could get by squeezing that. And also you can put the cover back on. Whereas if you squeeze it, you can't do that easily. So there's another one. And then I make sure I tin this side too because when I stick it on those European connectors on that board that I made up front, later it'll be easier to stick the wire in so I just make sure that I put some solder on this side too just like that you know those things you can buy when you clean your soldering iron that make them nice and shiny they run about ten bucks because I priced them and they you know, clean your soldering tip when you heat your soldering iron then you just run it into there it keeps it nice and shiny and um, I forgot where I read it but somebody said to get one of these pan scrubber things here's the handle this was on here like this and I just ripped it off and put it in here but I bought this at the dollar store for a dollar the buddies so I don't know what this stuff is, but it uh, works really great. And you can just throw that part away. You know what, you could use that as a sander. 
Anyway, making more button connections. Even though m most of the wires are the same size, um, I'm making these ones a little bit longer because they go to the outsides. And you want to use a smaller soldering iron when you're dealing with these buttons. Because these little buttons are very delicate. And if I use the bigger soldering iron on them, there's a chance, you know, I could melt the plastic on the connections and actually ruin the buttons. So don't don't want to do that. Give a little tug, make sure it's tight. Not gonna fall off. I'm doing this left handed so the camera has a place to come and you can see what I'm doing. So if it looks like I'm shaking around, it's because I'm not used to doing things left handed. Okay, a little shrink wrap. Lost it. Oh, here it is. This stuff here, you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot and spend like 25 bucks for this, or you can go to Harbor Freight and for like five bucks you can have the whole thing with a box. And there's 42 pieces. I won't bore you with all these connections. I just wanted to do the first couple on camera. And then we, when we get up to the top of the board, we'll record a little bit more. And then, of course, I still have to strip the ends. Tin them so that they'll go into my homemade eye pack smoothly. Okay, I'll get further along and I'll be back. Well, the underside of all the wiring is done. Big accomplishment. It took me uh, about five hours just to do this. So I've run my wire bundles into the top here. Now I have to flip this thing over and start hooking them into the eye pack. So you can see all the bundles. Lots of wiring. This was uh, this was a hundred feet. You can see it's just about gone. There's our little bob that makes the the bug glow. They call that a bug light. Lots of wire in there. There's their amplifier system. Okay, I just wanted to show it. Well, all the systems are now hooked up. That mess of spaghetti wiring in there is all the switches, knobs, and buttons from the front coming to the back here that go to my homemade iPad controller that you've seen me working on in another video. Over here on the side is the amplifier system. 
and uh, you know you can see a speaker up in there there should be another one right up there if I take you way up in here you can probably see um, you can see the fluorescent tubes and whatnot and I already showed you the bottom I am purposely not showing you the completed project from the front yet because I'd like to save that for the reveal however we recently did a video and for a few seconds in the background was the completed cabinet that you could see from the front view so if you're interested in seeing it right now uh, before the reveal look for that video and you'll see it it's just sitting there um, in wide open okay guys well we're kind of considering um, having this run on a PC as well as uh, the Raspberry Pi. In testing, we've run into some problems with the Raspberry Pi with the audio and the video playing smoothly. And we're still doing testing, but don't be surprised if we also have this hooked up to a PC. Um, there's been um, a lot more emulators written for the PC than the Raspberry Pi. And I'm not a programmer, so as far as programming the Raspberry Pi for the emulation, that's better left to somebody that knows what they're doing so I have to work with what I can get my hands on so next time you see this thing will be the reveal uh, we'll show you the front and back the insides the outsides all the sides it's coming out really good and we're proud of it so thanks for watching guys we'll see you next time take care of yourself bye for now hey guys this is Steve thanks for watching hey don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment see ya